From Tech TV, welcome to Panorama. I'm your hostess, Gada Hamadani. Unplanned is a 2019 American anti-abortion film. Due to its subject matter, some TV channels refused to air ads for the film. In July 2019, people across Canada boycotted Simplex for showing the pro-life movie, Unplanned. Despite the controversy and limited promotional campaign, the film was a moderate box office success, grossing $19 million on a $6 million budget. To shed light on the movie, I'd like to welcome my guest, the international liaison for the movie, Unplanned, Stacy Collins. Welcome, Stacy. Hello. Hi. Uh, Stacy. you're a worship leader and advanced pianist. How did you get involved in this movie? Well, I was in L.A., happening to be there with my family, with my husband, John, and my four kids. And they are all in the entertainment industry. And so I've been managing them and working with them in L.A. And I'm Canadian, but I was over there in L.A. And um, God brought into my life my friend Sheila, a few years back. And she um, got involved with this project. Mm -hmm. So who's Sheila and what's her involvement? Uh, Sheila Hart, she is a co-producer on the film, mm -hmm. and she was also involved in the casting. Okay, and what do your kids do in entertainment? My kids have garnered over 50 million followers on social media, mm -hmm. 5 million views. They are in singing, acting, dancing, you know, all those kind of uh fun things you do in the entertainment industry. <laughs> okay. Is it anything that you do that, you know, let your friend to ask you to get involved? She, Sheila and I um, walk together through just encouraging each other with mm -hmm. our families. And she started to notice how much I connect people. Like I, I just know people or they know someone that I know. And, you know, every time she'd say, hey, uh, we need to get a hold of this person. Oh, I know them. And so that was kind of when, when I came. So when I came back to Canada mm -hmm. in March, uh, mm -hmm. she said, hey, when we're opening up in Canada, you should become a part of this. Uh, mm -hmm. You'd be great at this. And I was like, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's an overwhelming thing to look at bringing a movie into a nation. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that I, I stepped into that role. Mm -hmm. And uh, how are you doing in Canada? It's like uh, in regards to, you know, touring and, you know, showing the movie. Well, it was quite a battle to get mm -hmm. unplanned here. And mm -hmm. it was in the news. I think we had more news than they did in the U.S., <laughs> believe mm -hmm. it or not. It's, it was like we had a lot of people that were afraid of, of mm -hmm. something they didn't know. Because mm -hmm. they, they they didn't know, like, what is this going to be? How is this going to impact us, right? Mm -hmm. So theater uh, owners, uh, Cineplex and Landmark, even private owners, you know, had reservations. And even distributors. We couldn't get any distributors on board. for mm -hmm. it, it opened in the States on March 29th. And we didn't open in Canada until July 12th. Mm -hmm. uh, Stacey, I remember, sh you know, it's like the first screening was at a church. So have you used the church platform, you know, it's like as a step for you to get the uh, movie, you know, it's like, uh, you know, get their way to the people here? Yes, the church. The church was an amazing open door. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, and, and what I loved about this is it wasn't just one, you know, denomination of church. It mm -hmm. was all groups of people who had a passion for life and so we've got the catholic we've got the evangelicals and we all came together and these leaders of the churches stepped in and said hey i want my congregation to see this i want them to know about this movie it was very powerful mm -hmm. um unplanned is what canada has been waiting for it's not just a movie and never has been that's what you wrote and shared to the producers and team of Unplanned in July 16th. Mm -hmm. What you meant and why you wrote that? Well, I got the privilege and blessing of being flown around Canada mm -hmm. and showing these pre-screenings to uh, leaders mm 
mm-hmm. and influencers. Mm-hmm. And I got to be firsthand and see the reaction to mm-hmm. the film. Mm-hmm. And that was life changing for me mm-hmm. because I got to see people who believed one thing from what they what they had experienced, but then when they saw the movie, they were like, I can't believe this anymore. I'm changing mm-hmm. the way I think because I'm seeing truth. Okay, it's like, do you believe the movie showed the truth all the time? Mm-hmm. I do. And mm-hmm. I had actually nurses come up to me mm-hmm. at a few different screenings and they said it's actually worse in real life of what they saw in the movie. Mm-hmm. Is it that they mean, you know, it's like in regards to the mother life or to the babies or it's like, what do they mean by it's worse than what it seems? Well, what they showed physically, you know, in the abortion scenes mm-hmm. and also what they showed of a young girl hemorrhaging, it would be much more dramatic even. Mm-hmm. So this it seems that this is dramatic when you watch the film, but it's actually even more in real life. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you believe watching this movie may change hearts and lives? Absolutely, it changed mine. Okay, how? <laughs> Here I was, you know, I minister with women and help women walk through freedom and healing, but I also am in the entertainment industry, mm-hmm. and you know, and I I am pro life, mm-hmm. but I never stood up in public and said, hey, you know, this is what I believe. And when I came alongside of with Unplanned, Mm -hmm. all of a sudden I was finding myself speaking out uh, because I had a platform Mm -hmm. that had something to back what I believed in Mm -hmm. and to share it. And so my heart, just watching people uh, impacted by watching the film but also changing their their hearts and minds it blew me away and actually one of the things that's so amazing is that i had women come up to me mm-hmm. that had abortions like 40 50 years ago and to be able to tell me now the freedom of that was beautiful and they actually said for the first time they felt grace and they were able to have freedom. Now, that is a miracle in itself. That's incredible. Uh, freedom of what? You know, if you can well, just elaborate more. Well, freedom from that secret and shame that they had never been able to release mm-hmm. and just, just not even understanding. And you know what was even more astounding is some of these women said to me, after 45 years, they looked at me and said, I never knew. And they even said, mm-hmm. I convinced myself there wasn't a baby. And they really, truly believe that. Mm-hmm. And what they need is grace. And so this movie is not only helping people who've had abortions, have been touched by an abortion, or um, someone in their family, but it's also helping other people who are looking from the other perspective and showing us how we can love and how we can embrace and give grace so that there can be healing for women all across our nation and to the world. Well, as a church leader, you know, it's like uh, most uh, religions, they believe, you know, it's like while it's under 40 days, uh, this is okay, you know, it's like you can abort. But after that, that's where the issue actually is like it becomes uh, like forbidden or you should not. So what's your say on that? Well, I had to wrestle with this myself, mm-hmm. you know, over the years. I'm 50, mm-hmm. so I've had a lot of years to you know, go through this. And one of the things that I felt uh, God showed me years ago was that mm-hmm. when the conception happens, when the sperm and the egg meet, I believe that the spirit of a person comes in instantly. And so I believe always a baby and never anything else. And so that's what I think a lot of people have to struggle through that. Mm-hmm. Of when do you when do you believe? Not what everybody tells us, but when do you and what do you see in science mm-hmm. that says this is a human being? This is a baby. Yeah. 
uh, but there are you know like cases and you know like like rape and you know other uh, maybe it's like medical uh, you know like conditions that requires the abortion so actually it's like at some point uh, the the choice has to be you know it's like left to the family uh, mm -hmm. what do you think well I believe we do all have a choice Mm -hmm. And that is, that's a hard, hard call. I've even had family members bring that very mm -hmm. question to me. Mm -hmm. But you want to know a beautiful thing that I experienced even in the last few months mm -hmm. is through being involved with Unplanned, I mm -hmm. had a young woman who is a mother of four mm -hmm. come to me and tell me her story. Five years ago, she was violently raped, and left for dead, and impregnated. Mm -hmm. And her husband said, hey, we're going to have a baby. He received this baby, and she calls it a love story. And that really challenged me. And she shared her, she said, it's a love story between God and me, between mm -hmm. a mother and her baby, and between a husband and wife. And she said, love wins. And so I asked her, like, everybody talks about this with um, when someone's raped. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a hard it's a hard thing to to go through and to it's very painful it's traumatic it's one of the most horrendous things that could ever happen to somebody and we never wish that on anyone we'd never want them to go through that and we understand that there is not an easy decision to be made but she said that every woman herself included that she met that have had rape and violence not one of them wanted to abort their baby now I know that's not this case in every situation, but what we what we have been uh, reminding people of is also: Do you want to cause another trauma to a woman who has already gone through such deep trauma? And what we're seeing when a woman has been 40 years later, she's still traumatized. She's running out of the movie and crying, you know, and still healing. Yeah, uh, Stacey, you're writing a book. Are you going to mention anything from you know, like what you've seen on Unplanned uh, in your book, or is going to be something else you're going to talk about? It's going to be a book about uh, embracing what what I've learned to be like positive. Sorry, just a second, my um, thing came up. The the book that I'm writing, the first book that I'm writing, is going to be about decree a thing and it'll be established and light will shine on your ways. It's a verse from the Bible, but it talks about, we use this, whether it's spiritual or in the natural, when we speak positive, when we speak out things, write them down. Um, it, you know, I'm starting today a 90 day uh, positive words, you know, mm -hmm. and how it can be life changing. And so the book is about impacting positive in people's lives and in your own life to make a change. Mm -hmm. Can you share some of those words with us? The, well, the no. positive, well, I didn't positive. write down the words, um, but mm -hmm. in, in October, I actually, mm -hmm. in October, I actually did a 31 day mm -hmm. um, words, mm -hmm. and I did a video every day. Okay. And some of those words were miracle, provision, love, joy, hope, peace and I had 31 of those and it and actually it it helped me and turned me inside out to really see how do I look at these words and I'd look up the definition and I would look up scriptures even to support but just really to and then I would speak it out mm -hmm. and help others how can you walk with provision how could you walk in love and we don't have all the answers obviously <laughs> like we but it's a journey it's a journey absolutely uh, in October an anticipated 1 million people will gather at the world's largest pro-life rallying in Pakistan why Pakistan because Pakistan has 2 million babies a year mm -hmm. aborted mm -hmm. and we want to make a difference we want to educate we want to show the film for free and bring the people all rallying together so they can hear mm -hmm. and see. 
uh, have you studied or analyzed, you know, like why those babies were aborted in Pakistan, this big number yearly? No, I haven't. Okay. So. That's a big question. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Is there any other countries you're trying to um, go ahead with your movie and try to promote it there? Every country. We are mm -hmm. touching every country. We're opened already in 20 countries okay. um, where they said, hey, we, you can come in. Um, Australia is our next one. I'm working mm -hmm. on UK and Ireland right now mm -hmm. and with Sheila. And we're looking for any area of the world you want to see unplanned come into your country. Mm -hmm. Let us know. Absolutely. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add today? I want to thank you for having me on as a guest and I really honor you in what you stand for and what you um, do for your show and you impact people's lives with bringing them topics that can help them choose one way or the other. And I love that. I think that's a really great thing. I'm thankful to be a part of Unplanned. I have been behind the scenes and seen people in their everyday life who made this amazing movie happen, coming together. And I just am so honored um, to be a part of a movement that is not only for our nation, but is for the world. And I believe many babies' lives are gonna be saved. That's our, that's our passion, that's our heart, is babies' lives saved. And so if you have a creative way that you can help women to have more options, we can't just say, hey, don't go do this. Mm -hmm. We're asking, hey, think of ways that you can be outside the box. How can you help women? So we're supporting. We're not saying go outside there because 70% of women who have abortions are in the church. And that's very sad because they're afraid. And so we want to open up the topic to say, hey, we're here for you. We'll help you. And let's do that. You know, someone in Calgary here is starting a women's home for young girls that their parents might not be you know okay with them having a baby where they can come and stay and be walked through what can you do rather than just well you go make a decision yourself so we want to we want to not just put this out there and not make a difference we we want people to rise up i want to start a women's home myself and and that's been a call on my heart for 30 years but this just motivates me more. There's such a need and we can't ignore it. Stacy, thank you very much and wish you all the best. Thank you. God bless. Up until next time, have a good night.